Hi everyone, welcome to DCO. My name is David Capetti and in this video, I'll be sharing how to take this dome and surfaces and turn them into solids. Now, I created this sphere as an example of surfaces that create a geometry. And then what we do is take that and basically turn it into solids by creating a few steps of moving the surface and extruding it uh, twice as much. I'll be having this as a free resource, but I wanted to share the process because I feel like some of these things are critical to understand. So to start, for the example, we need some surfaces. And so I usually take similar approaches most of the time. For this approach, I'm going to just create a sphere. But this sphere is going to be a mesh sphere. Now, as you can see, we can't really tell the detail here, and that's because we don't see the mesh wires. So this is where I double click here and go to mesh edges. And you'll see mesh edges, which is going to be what we want to plug in our mesh into so we can see the edges. As you can see, now we have both um, all of the wires here in two outputs. So I'll take both of those outputs and bring them both into just one curve component here. I'll plug in both the naked edges and interior edges into the curve. And as you can see, we actually have no naked, naked edges and that's because there's no, it's not open. This is a closed uh, surface or a mesh. So we technically don't need to plug that in, but we'll just leave it there for now. Now what we want to do is take these and disable the preview and also disable the preview of the mesh. Now with this mesh sphere, we can actually change the UNV count. We can actually just say, change the UNV to something like five. Now to create the surfaces, there's different ways we can do this. I'm going to go over two different examples. Um, they both kind of achieve similar results, but they have both their pitfalls. This first one, we're going to first get the smash center. So we're going to bring in an area component. Then we're going to scale all of these lines relative to that center point. So we're going to go to scale. We're going to plug in the centroid from the area component into the center and plug in the curves into the geometry. As you can see, it actually scales it down. So for the factor, let's pick a number between 0.5 and two. So I'll go five or 0.5 less than 2, 0.00. This way, it scales it down if you do a number smaller than one, but it will actually scale it up if it's a number that's larger than one. And this is um, always the case when you scale things, it's going to be relative to the size, the original size, which is going to be one. So a number larger than one, it's going to scale it up and a number smaller than one will actually scale it down. The next step is going to be taking these two and lofting them together to create the surface in between the two. So the component that we'll bring in is called loft. So we'll bring in double click, bring in loft, and we're going to plug in those curves into the input. Now you'll see that it's not going to work if we plug them in like this, like this, or even if we grab them like this, it won't work. So what we have to do is bring in the loft and also bring in a component called graft tree. This way it brings them organized in the same way. So when you hover, we have 91 values, 91 values, and we can plug in both of those in graft here. Oh, 
It's because I have the wrong one plugged in. Okay, so that is the reason why it's not working. Okay, let's go back to loft and plug in this tree with this one. Holding down shift, you can add inputs. And as you can see, we have now the ability to scale this up or scale this down, create a wireframe, and we can change the subdivisions. Technically, this is not the point of the tutorial, but these are some fun things that you can do here. Um, let me show you the other way to achieve this. The other way to achieve this, I'm just going to take these and move them up, group it as example one. So I'll group this and change the name by right clicking on the group. Example one. Now let's move on to the second part which is going to be to do this again in a different fashion. Now, I'll show you that there are there are things that are not desirable about this and I'll show you what they are. So we'll bring in an extrude and we're going to extrude these curves. Now, we do also need the center points of these curves. So we'll go to a midpoint. And now use a line from the center to those. And this only works with a the sphere. There are other things that we can do if the surface is not uh, symmetrical. Go here to align. Now we're going to connect the midpoint as the endpoint and the centroid as the start point. Now we're going to extrude these lines using the these lines as the vector so each point has a line and that line has a vector a magnitude and a direction so what we need to do is change the, the magnitude and keep the direction by using amplitude so this is where we bring in an amplitude component we plug in these lines as our vector and our vector as our direction which gives us the extrusion perpendicular or in the same direction as the line which goes to the center as you can see one of the things that it does that is different is the fact that it actually extrudes from there which means that it actually won't join these together and um so that's just something to be aware of but uh it's also good to important to kind of understand how this works uh i am going to take these group it and show you here example two and now get into what i was trying to show which is how to take all of these lofted curves and lines and i'll just able to put on everything else but this and turn these into solid members and that's a critical thing to do because um, a lot of the times we create like wireframes and uh, surfaces that are two-dimensional well with this algorithm that we're going to create we will be able to turn this into a three-dimensional solid so let me show you those steps first thing we're going to do is take these surfaces and go here to deconstruct view up we'll plug in those lofted surfaces into the b-rep input And now we are going to take each and every single one of those faces and we're going to extrude them out. Now, what I like to do is rather than do it to all of this, I like to just do it to one and then make sure that it takes care of one and that I could do it to all of them. With that being said, let's jump into selecting one of those faces. I'll go to item, list item, I'll plug in the faces in and under the list I'll go to flatten 
and under the index, I'll change that to, I don't know, something like 15. This way I can pick a different, a different segment that I can visualize here. And I'll disable the preview on everything else. And it's basically isolating it to just this surface so I can take care of the next few steps. Now, first thing we're going to do is move this perpendicular to its own surface. So first is move. And we're going to move this surface. So let's plug that into the geometry and the motion. We need to extrude it perpendicular to the face. So we'll bring in amplitude once again. And rather than using the vector, we're going to use the surface normal as the amplitude vector. So let's plug in the item into the vector and now the vector into the motion. And you'll see that it actually moves it out for the amplitude. Let's go to 1.5. 1.50 just so I can have some decimal points to kind of play with. Next thing is now that it's been extruded or moved out by 0.18. Now we can take this surface and do the same thing, but same thing, but extrude it the opposite direction by twice as much. And let me show you how to do that. Let's go to extrude. We'll plug in this surface that we moved. The direction is going to be this direction, but as you can see, it extrudes it out. So we don't want to go that way. We want to go negative. When we plug in negative, we're only at, we're back to where we started. We want to go twice as much as that. So this is where we bring, bring in a times Two or multi multiplication by two, you can also bring just a multiplication component and then for two, um, bring in a number. But the reason why I just do times two is because it gives me a component with two as the B, and I can just plug in this value, multiply it by two, giving me the overall thickness. So I'll disable the preview on this plane and on the item and now rather than flattening it i'll just remove flatten and it takes care of it to, for all of them now let's increase subdivisions here let's play around with some of these and let's see what this looks like so i'll middle click and then bake we can take this, move it here. So we can take a look here in shaded mode or even in rendered mode and see that it offset it perfectly with some solids. The issue, which is always the issue is when you create a solid, then we're dealing with overlaps. And um, this is where you would actually create a connection. So hopefully you found that useful. This is going to be something that I will be placing under the free resources tab on my website so if you want to get a hold of that go ahead and check out my website capettidavid.com where i have a lot of uh some free resources i have the script vault which you can get and gain access to a lot of past scripts and you can get in touch with me um, other than that thank you very much for being here i hope you enjoyed it and found it useful um, thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you next time if you haven't already, check out my website, capettidavid.com. There, I have free resources, as well as a script vault and script store, where you can access more than 150 scripts and be in touch with me in case you need help. So thank you very much for being here, and I hope to see you next time.